Hey, it's Chessie from Squeegee and Ink and welcome back to Printer's Corner. This is where I take your questions that you've given me using hashtag Printer's Corner all around the internet and on social media and I answer them in a little bit more depth. In today's episode we've got three questions. One of them's about avoiding beading when you're coating screens. The second one is asking which emulsion we use in our studio. And the third one is talking about whether all scoop coaters are the same. If you didn't watch last week's episode, make sure that you stick around to the end of the episode because we've introduced a new segment called Community Poll and we'll be covering that after the questions. If you want to get your question answered like this, just simply use hashtag printers corner and I'll pick those up for a future episode. Our first question is from Tim Lovelady and they said, I've got a question. How do you avoid getting those thick lines of emulsion where the edges of the scoop go to touch the screen? Is it just practice? I'd say half of it is practice in not putting too much emulsion in the scoop coater so it's overflowing over the edges. So I tend to put in about half to two thirds of emulsion into the coater. And then the second bit is using one of these. So this is the pro angle and it's basically got these extended lips on either side and that basically scoops up any excess beading or thick lines of emulsion that have kind of got over the edge and it just scoops them up for you making sure that all the emulsion is really nice and and um, you know a nice thin layer and it just means that it dries a little bit better you're not leaving emulsion on your exposure unit and all that type of thing so it's half and half but if you get one of these it's going to neaten up the edges for you and you don't have to have that much experience our second question is from Peace and Barrels and they said, oh, what emulsion is that? I like the color change when it's cured. Seems like it's sprayed out easy too. We often get asked about what emulsion we're using in the studio, but it's probably unlikely that we're gonna have the same applications as in me and you. I'd always ask your screen print supplier. For example, in the UK, we've got Screen Print World and they tend to have two different ones called Screen Sole. So I would ask your supplier, tell them what you're printing, what you're printing onto and with what inks, and they'll guide you a little bit better. But just so you know, we're using Azacol Z1, but we have got a larger array of customers and applications that we need to make sure that we're providing the best screens possible for. So you don't have to go that overkill. For example, it's a lot more expensive than ScreenSol and it's more difficult to get. And then I also noticed you said that it sprays out easier too. And that's actually mainly down to when you're washing out the screen after it's exposed and you bring it into the washout booth what I tend to do is I get the back of the screen where the squeegee is and I would very very lightly wet that side turn it over wet the other side and maybe leave it for 30 seconds 45 seconds and that just allows the emulsion to kind of break down because it is water soluble because it hasn't been cured let it like soak for a little bit and then spray it out fully on the flat side where it's coming into contact with the t-shirt because that's where it's most strongest. And once you rinse that off, then you're not forcing the emulsion out and potentially damaging the edges of your emulsion. You're just kind of letting it fall off. So that might be why it looks a bit easier for me than it is for you. But another thing, if your emulsion isn't washing out easily, it might be that the light is getting through your film positives and maybe curing the emulsion behind the film positives. So you might need to think about making your film positives a little bit more dense so they block out more light and then it's easier for you to wash out. Our third question is more of a comment actually and it's from 501 Clothing Co. And it's relating to this TikTok video. We get this question a lot about coating really nice and evenly and not having these two kind of beading lines on either side of the emulsion where like build up happens. So we use this one. This is the scoop coater which has an extended edge. This is called the Pro Angle. We have it in two different sizes for our two different main size screens. And what it does is when you're coating, it's got this extended bit which essentially basically just scoops up any excess when you're coating and it makes the uh, emulsion layer look really really neat. We got ours from Screen Print World using our discount code CRP5 and I'll just show you how it works now.
section. It is a little bit about technique, not overfilling the, the coating trough too much, maybe like half to two thirds full. And um, it just helps to have those little excess pickup bits on the pro angle coater. In the video you can see we're talking about the pro angle scoop coater and basically 501 Clothing Co said she ain't lying best scoop coater triple exclamation mark so they're definitely agreeing with me and in fact I actually went through a lot of different scoop coaters before finding this one so I used to have oh, I don't know probably about 10 11 different coaters ranging from little ones like this where the edges are glued in they're really really cheap ones but they do the job, if you have a tiny little screen, to having lots like this, where they're kind of like a very basic trough, and then they come with these end caps that fit on the edges and kind of slot in. The problem is these, um, they're not very like secure on there. So then you're finding that you're having to hold those in with your fingers, hoping that they don't fall off and reach the whole way up and try and apply a good coat. So it is a bit more precarious and if those drop off you're basically spilling emulsion from, see that one's already popped off, you'll just be pouring emulsion here and it just becomes a bit of a mess. So when I found that you've got this one where it's all literally screwed in and really really super secure then I just standardized my screen sizes so that I could just have two of these so they fit perfectly in my screens and I haven't used those ones since. There might be a light. I think I've used those for a, like a really massive screen once since um, finding the Pro Angle. So it's a huge recommendation. And uh, we got it from Screen Print World using our discount code CRP5. And I'd massively recommend getting a little bit of a nice kit. One other thing about this is it's got two different edges. A lot of the coaters do, but this one's got a sharp edge and a rounder edge. So for example, if you want a slightly thicker deposit of emulsion, you'd use the rounded edge. So for example, in low mesh counts where you're printing a high deposit of ink. And then if you've got a really high definition emulsion on some screens, then you might want a thinner coat of emulsion for a lighter deposit of ink. And then you might pick the nice sharp side of the coater. So it's kind of like two coaters in one and I can't rave about it enough. So to round up this week's question, which is, are all scoop coaters the same? I'm definitely saying no, because I've got 10 of the other ones and only two, uh, the pro angle ones. So I think they're actually really good value for money and I am never giving those up. Community poll. Now for this week's community poll. If you want to cast your vote in the community poll, you simply have to go to our YouTube channel, click on the community tab, and you'll see all the latest polls there. This week's question was, you have to, to coat a 110 screen with emulsion. In the UK, that's a 43T. You're printing white plaster sole on a black shirt. How many coats of emulsion will you do? And the most popular answer was, coating one on one with 48% of all the votes. So that's quite that's quite a big percentage. And what we mean by one on one is one coat on each side. And I also asked that question to the emulsion guru on our podcast and he basically just knows everything about emulsion and with that particular circumstance he agreed because coating one and one means that he's encapsulating the mesh with emulsion and that basically means surrounding the mesh with enough emulsion so that it gives a really nice deposit of ink and it's also going to like hold all the details so the emulsion isn't weaving in and out of the mesh it's being encapsulated both sides um, some people went for more which is fine as well if they want to deposit more ink and um, yeah a couple of people even said they just coat once on one side so if you've managed to get away with that that's great but you can make it a little bit more consistent for yourself if you coat one on one but if it's working for three percent of the community then crack on I hope you've enjoyed this week's Printer's Corner and don't forget to ask us questions using hashtag Printer's Corner and make sure you answer next week's poll so I can reveal the results again.